Can this little box power my entire building? Let's put it to the test. Yes, it does. I've got the time. As you might be aware, I like batteries. And in all the years that I've been reviewing commercially available battery products, one of the ones that stood out is the EcoFlow Delta 1300, right? This is a battery box that is the best one, really, because it has the best type of battery. It's got the best weight size ratio to power output, right? What that means is that it is the smallest, lightest uh, unit that it's still powerful, right? It charges very quick, and there's a bunch of other reasons why I consider it to be the best. And the cool thing is that today, EcoFlow just released their brand new EcoFlow Delta Max. Let's put it in a table and let's review it to see how much better it is. Okay, the EcoFlow Delta Max. It's what I would call a standard box, battery box, right? It has a bunch of plugs to put energy into the battery and then a bunch of ports to get the energy out of the box, right? So let's go through the specification. Net weight, it's approximately 48 pounds, which is way lighter than the competition. Dimensions, 19.6 inches by 9.5 by 12 inches. Capacity, 2016 watt hours at 50.4 volts. It has all the ULCE, FCC, ROHS, uh, and Telic certifications. It has Wi-Fi support, which means that you can connect it to your network. It's got six AC output ports, pure sine wave, 24 watt total, surge, 5,000 watts, 120 volts, 50 hertz, 60 hertz. Max devices power supported by Xboost, 3,400 watts. It's got the usual assortment of USB-A, two ports at five volts, 2.4 amps, right? So about 12 watts per port, USB-A fast, charge ports, uh, two of them, five volts, 2.4, and these will support nine volts, two amps, 12 volts, 1.5 amps, for a total of 18 watts max per port. USB-C has got two of those ports. It does five, nine, 12, 15, and 20 volts at five amps, 100 watts max per port. Car charger, 12.6 volt at 10 amps, 126 watts max. And then it's got a couple of DC 5521 output port. Rated at 12.6 volts, 3 amps per port. Now the input ports, AC charge, extreme fast charge, 1800 watt max. This is 15 amps. This is some of the fastest charging in the industry for this type of product. AC input voltage, 100 to 120 volts, 50 hertz and 60 hertz, 50 amps. Solar charging, 11 to 100 volts, 10 amps, max 800 watts. Car charger supports 12 volts and 24 volts battery. Defaults 8 amps. Cell chemistry is NCM. Cycle life, I don't, I don't know what this shell life one year after one full charge. These batteries last a long time. Cycle life, 80% plus capacity after 800 cycles. Protection over voltage protection over low, over temperature protection, short circuit, low temperature, low voltage, over current protection. So this battery is pretty protected. The BMS is pretty advanced and it protects the battery of all these things. Additional connections. This unit is one of the first ones that I review that does expansion, that has expansion ports. Smart extra battery supports up to two Delta Max extra batteries sold separately and uh ecoflow has agreed to send me at least one of these batteries so that i can test it and i can show you guys at a later date another cool thing that this unit has that none of the other ones have is an emergency power supply eps mode which means that you can use it as a ups Okay, here's a part of the review where I run a bunch of tests on the product. But here's the thing, the Delta Max is just incrementally better than the Delta 1300. I mean, the capacity tests gave me 800 watts more than the Delta 1300 for a total of 1800 watt hours. And that represents 90% efficiency. I was able to get 2200 watts continuous out of the inverter. And just like the Delta 1300, I was able to weld but this time on the highest setting of my welder. 
It also charged my Tesla just fine, and it gave me an extra three miles for a total of six miles. The sine wave looks just as clean, even under load. So all of this can be summed up to it's just better than the previous version. It holds more energy, it puts out more power, it charges faster, you can use it as a UPS, even for your entire house, it's expandable. In other words, the best solar generator just got better. Okay, so before I wrap up this review, there is one last thing, the teardown. This is where I take apart these devices so that we can all appreciate the internal beauty as well as the external and see if the manufacturer use quality components inside. Okay, let's get started. All right, here is the Delta Max completely torn apart. Let me just start by the things that stand out, right? First things that stand out is the simplicity at which uh, it's put together. You don't need any specialized tools. All you need is an Allen wrench and then a screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, and everything comes apart. There's no funny, no glued part. Everything snaps together and screws together. And so if you want to repair this unit ever in the future, right, you can do it. You can take it apart and then get to the individual components inside. The other part, of course, is the individual components. Here is the main board, which is the inverter, right? This inverter right here is on its own separate board, and if something ever happens to it, then you could potentially have EcoFlow send you a replacement board. This board right here is the MPPT charge controller. So this is a good thing that they're separate because Sometimes these fail, right? You need to have it in a separate board like this so you can replace it. The other good thing that's in here is all this metal, right? This metal is good stuff because if you ever drop your unit, then you can make sure that all of these electronics are gonna be protected, right? It's not just plastic that is gonna crack and is gonna break, but there's a substantial structure inside that is going to protect this and the battery. Uh, another good thing in here is good design. You see, here is the inverter board, and then here is the MPPT charger. This is the main brain unit, and then this is the BMS board, and then these are just breakout boards for the AC. There's a lot of stuff here that you don't see. For example, the charger. This unit has one of the largest chargers. It charges up to 1500, 1600 watts, right? And where's the charger? Well, it's right here. It uses the same parts that are used for the inverter, right? The same chokes, the same transistors, the same caps and transformers, all of that stuff, it's used to charge the battery back up, right? So this is a very smart way to design this unit. That means that you don't have to carry a brick. Let me show you this brick. This other unit right here, you have to carry this charger. And this charger, by the way, is not even half the speed of the charger that's uh, in here, right? This is a 3000 or 2400 watt uh inverter so it could potentially charge this battery up to that speed 2400 right if you're smart enough to engineer and design the circuits that way right and so these guys did that and that is why they end up with such a small compact unit compared to the competitors right that are using separate uh parts to do to do these jobs of charging and then discharging right now let's Take a look at the main part of this. This is basically a battery box, right? So it's a box with this battery and then an inverter. That's it. So so this is by far the biggest, heaviest part of it. And there's two kilowatt hours right here. But this is very, very compact compared to all the competitors because they are using, well, the best cells in the world uh, up until now, 18650s. Now, these are nondescript cells that are probably Chinese, right? And so they're probably good quality. It's just they're not name brand cells. And there are 16 cells in parallel 
and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cells in series. And there's two of these modules. There's another seven on this side. So this is a 14S, 16P battery configuration. And then that is all put together very neatly. Here's uh, the PCB that connects the two modules. And then here are the two main bus bars. You see how thick they are? They're pretty big. And then this is also pretty ingenious. This BMS board right here does a bunch of things. It's also the switch to switch on this unit, right? Uh, the BMS, these MOSFETs right here, they're used to switch on and off in the case of an emergency, but also just when you turn the unit on and when you turn it off, these are the MOSFETs that turn on and off. And also this right here is the expansion ports. The BMS handles that, right? So this goes where, right here? Yes, and then there are bus bars that connect that in there. By the way, those are XT150-EP.F.P. This is a pretty custom connector that has two main pins for the power and six pins for data. Right, and here's the little board, it connects them. The negative is common. Ribbon carries all the data into the BMS here. And so this sits right here. This BMS also handles that. It handles separate batteries, up to three, two sec secondary batteries, right? So the main one and two more, and it'll parallel them. And I'm sure it'll handle if the batteries are at different state of charge when you connect them then these uh, MOSFETs right here will stay off, keep them dis disconnected so that uh, right nothing bad can happen. Also, when you're charging this unit, obviously this will also handle charging the external uh, battery pack. So this is a lot of technology here, very well designed, very compact, right? Very smartly done so that you can have a nice compact unit. Everything else, the plastic seems high quality. There's uh, four fans in this unit so that they can keep all the electronics cool and also quiet because uh, when I was using it, it was on, but it wasn't obnoxiously loud, right? And so that is also a good thing. Now here for the first time, we see uh, a mass XT90 connector for the AC lines. Look at that. This is where you connect the, uh, the plugs and they use an XT90, which is usually we think about them as being low voltage, right? Uh, RC connectors, but here they're using it for the high voltage, for the 120 volts AC. And then here's the other thing that the charge plug in here, it's a smart one, it's a three pin. Look at that, it's two, it's an XT60, but it's got a third pin in there and you can see it on the inside. So there's some data that you will be able to connect through the charging port, uh, the solar charging port, right? So we don't know exactly what's gonna, where they're gonna use that for, but in the future, I'm hoping that it's gonna be something good. So there we go. This is very good. I, I guess I give it like a, a nine out of 10 when it comes to serviceability, because I was able to take this apart really quickly and I am gonna be able to put this back together very easily because everything is well designed. They use regular fasteners. There's about four, types of fasteners that's the other thing sometimes a lot of these devices use a million different types and then it's hard to put it back together because you don't remember where each one of the types of screws goes right but this one they keep it to a low number there's a lot of a lot of the same screws that go throughout the unit and stuff and uh this is actually pretty good too all right let's put it back together Right, now that I put it back together, will it work? Ah, there we go. It turned on. See, there you go. Good design, it's easy to put back together. Even a moron like me can do it. All right, the EcoFlow Delta Max launches its crowdfunding campaign today. So check it out to see the prices and to get the early bird perks that you can get there. Links to the campaign are included in the description down below. I want to thank you for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.